Hello everyone, this is Jake from Five Paranormal, and this is my very first filmed Spiricom Tone Experiments. Now, I'm using the 13 frequencies outlined in the Spiricom manual of the Mark IV. So as you can see, I have my laptop set up and I'm using a tone generator software to generate the 13 tones. And then over here on an elevated position, I'm actually holding it up here for you to see, is the rod of a diode. I'm going to go ahead and run the diode with the tones, you know, just to see what will happen. So, without further ado, I'm going to actually turn on the voice recorder. Okay, so it's going. Alright, let's try it. Alright, hello, is there anyone here with us tonight, with me tonight? A few years ago, I was browsing the internet on a boring day with nothing going on. I was listening to music on YouTube as I searched the internet for my next paranormal research project. I then stumbled upon something from the 1970s that caught my attention immediately and altered the course of my paranormal research for the next year. I would go on to develop my own version of the Spiricom and would track down the last known Spiricom in existence to bring my research full circle. In this essay, I will give a brief history of the Spiricom device and the use of frequencies to speak to spirits, my research, and experiences with frequencies, as well as my final thoughts and the future of my frequency experiments. The Spiricom came into existence in 1979 with the partnership of Bill O'Neill and George Meek. The device uses 13 frequency generators set to certain tones hooked up to a larger machine that was also hooked up to a microphone so the investigator could speak to the spirits. It basically works like a modern day spirit box. It, just, you know, it has real time communication and all that stuff. The spirits use the energy generated to speak to us and like I said can be heard in real time. Many recordings of the Spiritcom can easily be found on the internet and the evidence is very interesting. Meek and O'Neill would work on many other paranormal devices that played with the idea of using frequencies to communicate with spirits and other supernatural beings. In fact, it was almost common knowledge in the paranormal community at the time that you had a better chance of communicating with spirits using frequencies than by using white noise. Many other well-known investigators and researchers such as Constantine Roderay, Frederick Hergensen used frequencies in their recording equipment to record voices of the dead. It wasn't until later that people started to prefer using white noise than frequencies during investigations, but the idea of using frequencies is making a comeback, I believe. I saw an episode of Ghost Adventures recently where they were using infrasound and other frequencies to communicate with spirits. Modern paranormal equipment owes a lot of credit to the Spiricon for bringing in the idea of real-time spirit communication to the forefront of the paranormal community. I realized pretty quickly after reading about the Spiricon that I could create a similar device using a tone generator software I found on the internet. This is not a Spiricon at all, but it uses the same principles that made the Spiricon unique. So I downloaded the software, checked for viruses of course, and then plugged in the 13 frequencies into the generator and waited to see what would happen. Surprisingly, it worked. It didn't sound exactly like the Spiricom, but it was close enough, and it generated extra energy into the environment that could be used in other ways for investigations. My first few tests weren't anything to write home about, and they were pretty boring to be honest. I was able to prove that the device did give off added energy using my K2 meter, and I noticed that the energy of the room felt differently when the frequencies were in use. After playing around with some of the frequencies, I decided it was time to do a full session with the device. I decided to call this experiment the Fifecom Sessions, and I set up my equipment for a session one su Sunday afternoon. I had the Fifecom, a voice recorder, candle, and a spirit box nearby just in case. After about 10 minutes of the device running, I thought I heard one voice, but it could have been my ears playing tricks on me. I decided to turn on the spirit box to see if the extra energy would lead to an increase in voices, and I was amazed by what would happen next. I received some of the clear spirit box clips I have ever recorded and I was even getting clear, full sentences coming across the spirit box. I would do a few more sessions over the next few months, but I wouldn't make any more breakthroughs. I did use the Fifecom on our investigation of the manor house in Williamsburg, but I wouldn't get anything to come across. I did succeed in annoying the other investigators with me though, so you know, at least the device did something. After the investigation, I took a break from my experiments, but I did one final session in September of 2019. 
Since then, I have not done anything with the frequencies or the FIFCOM, but I'm still researching how frequencies affect energy in a physical environment, and I think I know how to make the device more effective. I plan on using the FIFCOM on our next investigation, and hopefully I will record my first voice over the frequencies on that investigation. So what are my thoughts on the spirit comm and the idea of using frequencies to com communicate with spirits? First off, I believe the spirit comm was legit and the theory and science behind it makes a lot of sense to me. I really like the extra energy that is pumped into the environment and I believe this can lead to an increase in EVPs and spirit box clips as well as the spirits being able to make themselves known during an investigation. I would love to build a full Spiritcom one day using the original blueprints that can be found online just to see what would happen if you used one on an investigation in a location that is said to be full of paranormal activity. I did not stop my experiments because I didn't get results. I stopped them because other ideas and experiments came to my attention and I shifted focus on other projects so that I wouldn't become narrow-minded in my research as an investigator. I like to have knowledge of many different approaches to investigations so that you can view the paranormal from several different perspectives. In my opinion, I think this makes you a better investigator and you never know what will and what won't work for you. I will continue to work on my frequency experiments and in fact I've recently started doing experiments with infrasound and I'm intrigued by the potential that infrasound has on increasing paranormal evidence collected on an investigation. So what are your thoughts on using frequencies on investigations rather than white noise? Have you done similar experiments or what are some ideas you have that might help me with my experiments? I hope you all have learned something from this article and maybe this will lead you to do your own investigation into other ways to communicate with spirits. I will record my next FIFCOM session and hopefully I'll make a breakthrough in my research soon. Thank you all for watching this video. Leave a like if you enjoyed it and don't forget to comment and have a great day everyone.